Kawasaki disease. The primary learning objectives are to describe the diagnostic clinical criteria and other clinical manifestations of Kawasaki disease, as well as to review its current standard treatments and potential outcomes. The presentation outline includes diagnostic criteria, epidemiology and pathogenesis, clinical manifestations, incomplete Kawasaki disease, ancillary studies, and treatment and prognosis. Kawasaki disease is one of the most common vasculitides of childhood, and it is named after Dr. Tamasaku Kawasaki, who first described the illness in 1967. Kawasaki disease, or KD, was formerly called mucocutaneous lymph node syndrome. It is a vasculitis that predominantly affects the medium-sized arteries, and its diagnosis is based on the presence of characteristic clinical features. Fever for at least five days is a mandatory criterion, and the presence of four of five other principal criteria is also required for diagnosis. These include one, bilateral, non-exudative, bulbar, conjunctival injection with limbal sparing. Two, changes in the lips and oral cavity, including erythema or diffuse injection of the oral and pharyngeal mucosa, strawberry tongue, and lip cracking. Three, changes in the extremities, including edema and erythema of the hands and feet, or periungal peeling involving the fingers and toes. Four, polymorphous rash. And five, non-separative cervical lymphadenopathy with at least one node measuring greater than 1.5 centimeters in diameter. In the presence of fever and coronary artery changes, however, fewer than four criteria can be present. Also imperative is the exclusion of other diseases that may present with similar findings. KD is seen worldwide, but the highest incidence occurs in children of Asian descent. The incidence of KD is highest in Japan, with reported rates of 120 to 150 per 100,000 children per year. KD is an illness of early childhood, and 85% of affected patients are younger than 5 years of age. The average age of onset is approximately 2 years of age. There is a slight male predominance with an average ratio of 1.5 males affected per 1 female. There are reports of seasonal variation, which vary by geographic area. In Japan, the disease appears to have a bimodal distribution with an increased occurrence in January and the summer months of June and July. In North America, cases tend to cluster between the months of November and May. The cause of KD remains unknown, but it is thought to be due to a combination of factors. Many observations support an infectious origin, including 1. Its predilection for the young age group. Two, up to one-third of children with KD also have an identifiable infection. Three, affected twin pairs can become ill within two weeks of each other. And four, the self-limited nature of the illness. A genetic predisposition also seems likely, given the higher risk of KD in Asian children regardless of their country of residence, and the higher risk of KD in siblings of affected children. In Japan, siblings of affected children have a risk of contracting KD that is approximately 10 times greater than the risk of the general population. There are also a number of associated immune system abnormalities thought to be integral in the pathogenesis of KD. The course of untreated KD may be divided into three phases, an acute febrile period that may last 10 to 14 days and is then followed by a subacute phase that may last 2 to 4 weeks. The convalescent period starts with the return of the platelet count and sedimentation rate to normal and typically resolves 8 to 10 weeks after illness onset, but may last months to years. Some children will present with features of Kawasaki disease but do not fulfill the diagnostic criteria. These children are classified as having an atypical or incomplete form of KD. They experience persistent fever but fulfill fewer than four of the five principal criteria. In these cases, laboratory data and echocardiogram results may be helpful to clarify the diagnosis. Younger patients are more likely to have atypical features and to develop aneurysms. Kawasaki disease typically begins with an abrupt onset of persistent fever that often exceeds 101 degrees Fahrenheit and is minimally responsive to antipyretics. 
Swollen, cracked red lips and a strawberry tongue are characteristic of Kawasaki disease, as evident in the bottom two pictures. Bilateral, non-exudative, bulbar conjunctivitis is also common and typically spares the limbus, as depicted in the most upper picture. Patients may also exhibit photophobia. The cervical lymphadenopathy in KD is typically unilateral, and as mentioned previously, one node must measure greater than 1.5 centimeters in diameter. Rashes in KD can be quite variable. The polymorphous macular exanthem typically seen involves slightly raised erythematous lesions, some with discrete borders and some with central clearing, as depicted in the bottom left picture. As depicted in the top left picture, perennial desquamation is also common during the acute phase, but is not part of the diagnostic criteria. As depicted in the top right picture, indurated edema and erythema of the hands and feet is one of the extremity changes that may occur in KD, typically during the acute phase. During the subacute phase, periungal peeling of the fingers and toes may occur, as depicted in the bottom right picture. KD has a predilection for the coronary arteries, leading to ectasia and or aneurysm formation in some cases, as depicted in this aortogram in a child with KD. KD is actually the leading cause of acquired heart disease in children in most developed countries. Approximately 20 to 25 percent of untreated KD patients experience coronary artery abnormalities. Predictors of coronary artery involvement include young age, male gender, and certain laboratory abnormalities including neutrophilia, thrombocytopenia, elevated liver enzymes, hyponatremia, hypoalbuminemia, and elevated C-reactive protein. Asian and Pacific Islander race and Hispanic ethnicity are also risk factors for coronary artery abnormalities. Prolonged fever is also associated with the development of coronary artery disease. Coronary artery aneurysms equal to or greater than 8 millimeters pose the greatest risk for rupture, thrombosis or stenosis, or myocardial infarction. Other clinical manifestations not included in the clinical criteria are commonly present. GI symptoms include vomiting, diarrhea or abdominal pain. Pulmonary symptoms include interstitial infiltrates and or effusions. Children typically have significant irritability, likely due to aseptic meningitis mild hepatitis, urethritis with sterile pyuria, and arthritis, or a combination of all of the above. Arthritis may occur earlier during the subacute phase of the illness. There is no diagnostic laboratory test for KD, but patients usually have rather characteristic laboratory abnormalities. Patients may have elevated white blood cell counts with a predominance of neutrophils. The platelet count may be normal the first week of illness, but then rapidly increases by the second to third week of illness, sometimes exceeding 1 million platelets per cubic millimeter. Elevated inflammatory markers, including the sedimentation rate and C-reactive protein, are universally present. Sterile pyuria, an elevated von Willebrand factor antigen, elevated hepatic transaminases, and CSF pleocytosis may also be present. Echocardiography is the most useful test to monitor for development of coronary artery abnormalities and should be performed at diagnosis and again after two to three weeks of illness. If the echocardiogram is normal, a repeat study should still be performed six to eight weeks after illness onset. More frequent imaging is required if any of the initial studies are abnormal. For patients with coronary artery abnormalities, the frequency of cardiology follow-up is tailored to the patient's coronary status. In this picture, a partially organized thromboembolus is present in an arterial lumen of a patient with KD. As soon as possible, patients with acute KD should be treated with 2 grams per kilogram of intravenous immunoglobulin and high-dose aspirin, typically 80 to 100 milligrams per kilogram per day, divided into Q6-hour dosing. IVIG treatment results in rapid defervescence and resolution of clinical signs of illness in 85 to 90 percent of patients. The prevalence of coronary artery disease in those children treated with IVIG and aspirin within 10 days of illness is 2 to 4 percent, compared to 20 to 25 percent of children treated with aspirin alone. The dose of aspirin can usually be decreased to antithrombotic doses of 3 to 5 milligrams per kilogram per day given as a single dose after the patient has been afebrile for 48 hours. 
Aspirin may be discontinued six to eight weeks after illness onset with normal serial echocardiograms. But patients with coronary artery abnormalities should remain on aspirin therapy indefinitely and may even require anticoagulation therapy. A small percentage of patients may be IVIG resistant, indicated by persistence or recurrence of fever 36 hours after the initial infusion. Typically, another dose of IVIG, 2 grams per kilogram, is administered. Other therapies used to date also include IV glucocorticoids and less often cyclophosphamide and plasmapheresis. Anti-tumor necrosis factor therapy has also been used with success, but is typically reserved for severe disease or those instances when two doses of IVIG and or glucocorticoids are ineffective. KD is typically self-limited and the prognosis is excellent in the majority of patients who receive timely treatment. Disease recurrence is rare and the overall mortality rate is low, currently estimated at less than 0.1%. The long-term morbidity for patients typically depends on the severity of coronary artery involvement. Overall, 50% of coronary artery aneurysms regress to normal by one to two years after the illness, with smaller aneurysms more likely to regress. Larger aneurysms are unlikely to resolve and are the ones most likely to lead to thrombosis or stenosis. Coronary artery bypass grafting may be required if myocardial perfusion is significantly impaired. In summary, the diagnostic criteria for Kawasaki disease include fever, oral mucous membrane changes, conjunctivitis, peripheral extremity changes, rash, and cervical lymphadenopathy. KD is the leading cause of acquired heart disease in children in most countries, and long-term morbidity depends on the severity of coronary artery involvement underscoring the importance of timely diagnosis and institution of treatment. Key references, 